Now, our viewers, we have arrived at the arrival point of JKA International Airport. Uh, Madam Dorcas, can you tell us what happens here? Okay, these are our arrival gates. We have several gates that are arriving from this end and this end. But within this uh, corridor or concourse area, we have our port health officers. And in our airport, since COVID began or even before COVID, yes. they have always been the first touch point because we want to ensure that anybody who comes to Kenya is healthy and they are always there at hand. We've just enhanced the measures currently that uh, Mr. Murkomen will be able to tell us. And when we leave here, we'll go through to immigration when everything has been cleared by Port Health. Thank you very much, Dorcas. Yeah. Now, Mr. Murkomen, you took us through the departure process. We are here at the arrival. I can see you have several desks, several gadgets here all around us, yeah. and a number of officers. Exactly. Can you tell us the passenger experience when they arrive from abroad and what goes through as it relates to public health? Yeah, thank you very much. I mean, this particular area is a screening area and uh, all travelers arriving into this country and those transiting through JKIA, this is the point whereby we screen all of them. Nobody will enter this country without uh, the screening from portal. And so you can see on my right, we have a screening booth. So my officers will sit at that booth on the right and this other booth on my left. And all passengers arriving will present a QR code. The QR code has all the details of the passenger before arriving. So they put their details, where they're coming from, the flight number. And once they arrive here, my team will scan using uh, an app called Chitenge, and this Chitenge will now produce or retrieve the data from the app. Then we put the temperature once we test. You can see on the other side we have two screens whereby we test the temperatures once they arrive. So these are thermal scanners. So we take the temperature on arrival and we insert through the tablets so that we know when they were arriving what was the temperature. And that is, those are some of the basic uh, information for COVID. When we get a case of over 37.5 degrees Celsius, they will not enter the country. What will happen? We have to return that traveler for further management. On my right, we have a clinic. So the clinician will come, check again the temperature of that person after 15 minutes. So we check whether maybe he has another condition. So we do what we call secondary screening. So from this secondary screening now, the clinicians will be able to establish whether it is malaria or COVID-19 or any other disease. So from that point, once they have ascertained that this person is not suffering from malaria, it is still very high. So that's the time when we will book this person for a referral. So we return through the same route so that because this area is termed as contaminated because they come through this way and this is a sterile area. So we return them downstairs. We have a facility for transporting this person to management in Kenyatta National Hospital or uh, Kenyatta University Hospital or Mbakadi Hospital. So the other activity that is being done here, we have a robot, a smart epidemic robot. On my right, yes, it does the same activity as well. One function for this robot, it disinfects when my teams are uh, um, doing other activities. It can be commanded, you can see the two jets, to disinfect this environment. Number two, it takes temperature and records all faces of travelers who are arriving in the country and records the information. Number three, it reminds passengers who don't have masks to put on their masks when they are not properly uh, put in the face. So if I was to walk there right now, it would remind me to put on So, them. yeah, if now we activate that, yeah. it, will, it will remind us that we don't have masks yes. and it will pick that and record the same. So, every month I get information on daily basis from this robot about what is happening in the arrivals. The other thing that we ensure that we screen through this area when we have any traveler having another condition apart from COVID 19. We manage those travelers in our clinic that is here. So you have an airport clinic? We have an airport clinic that is on my right. The clinicians are already available, well trained to manage any emergency at this area. 
On the other side, we do yellow fever screening as well. So for those countries that are having yellow fever endemic, so we do the yellow fever screening so that we ensure that those traveling to our country, which is a receptive country, we must ensure that we protect the citizens of this country from any uh, epidemic or any communicable diseases arriving into the country. Now, just for the benefit of our public, the QR code you check, yeah. it confirms that the traveler was tested for COVID before he departed Correct. from wherever they are coming from. Correct. And you're able to verify the information from your systems here. Yes. From this point, again, we verify the PCR yes. from the countries that are coming from. And the next phase we'll be doing in the near future, we'll be verifying the labs from those countries. Once those other countries upload their data into the system. So what will happen again, we'll confirm whether they are coming from accredited labs before they enter country. Yes. In cases when there was no COVID, how was the environment here? Before COVID, we were doing only yellow fever screening and uh, Ebola screening. You know, we were also having the lot of Ebola from DRC. And the work was not as much as now, because now we must screen all travelers arriving and we must screen all our travelers exiting through JKIA. So now we have more work in terms of uh, screening the travelers, because we must enter the data of all travelers coming to our country so that we can track them for 14 days. So because the QR code that we are having at the moment, the travelers must give us updates every day on where they are, the temperature, how they are feeling, so that we can follow them up and ensure that they are not uh, having signs and symptoms of COVID-19. So that's the only way we can protect the citizens of our country, by ensuring that we do proper surveillance out there once they enter our country. Now that we have a vaccine, what do you expect will happen going forward after maybe majority of uh, humans in the world have been vaccinated? What will be different from what we are doing now? Yeah, once we have inoculated or given vaccines to our citizens, of course, that is part of preventative measure. It's one of the measures that we are putting in place to ensure that we are preventing them from uh, uh, the virus. But it is not an assurance that you will not get another infection. So we must put precautionary measures in place continuously. That means there is confidence from those people who are trying to come to Kenya that now we have vaccinated our citizens and when we have three quarters of our citizens given the inoculation or vaccination, that means our citizens will develop what we call herd immunity yes. and we will not have a serious COVID-19 cases once they get the vaccine. As an experienced public health expert, as a parting shot, in very few words, what do you tell Kenyans about your role and uh, how you assist the travelers coming and getting out of Kenya? At this point, I just want to tell all Kenyans that Jomo Kenyatta International Airport is one of the uh, beautiful hubs in East and Central Africa. And I want to assure all travelers arriving in the country that we have a robust system to put in place preventative, precautionary measures and control measures to ensure that they are not contracting uh, COVID-19 while they are transiting through our airport. Number two, I want to assure them that we have a portal team that is well trained to manage any emergency once they are transiting or arriving through Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. Mr. Mukoman, thank you very much and we hope to see you next time. Asante San. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Now, a question to our viewers. Where can you get a yellow fever vaccine in Kenya? Where can you get a yellow fever vaccine in Kenya? For more gifts from our bag, give us the correct answer. Keep following us on our handles and engage us continuously. And now we move on to the next step in our arrival process. Thank you. Mr. Edwin. Yes. How are you once again? Good, thank you. Pleasure to meet you once again. Uh -huh. uh, we had a great walk through the airport. Mm -hmm. Now we meet again at the arrival side of the airport mm -hmm. and the public would like to know what happens around here. Okay, so welcome again. This is passport control on the arrival side. The things that we look for here are, are somehow slightly different from the things that we, I had informed you on the departure side. Because this is where now a, a passenger is seeking permission to enter our country. So as you can see again, our counters are segregated into different sections. 
we have the sky priority, the diplomatic, the Kenya citizens. We do want to give priority to our Kenyan passenger because you remember this is their home ground. They would want to feel appreciated after being out there. And this is where now they have an advantage. What guides us as we process the passengers on arrival are the visa regulations. And the visa regulations are divided into three categories. Category one is of those passengers who do not need visa to come to Kenya. So they just come with their passport, get to the immigration counter, they get the authority in their passports and enter the country. Then we have category two. Those are, 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 are passengers who just fill their visa online, pay online, and it is immediately uh, approved. Then they come with a visa that has been approved and their passport. Then they will be processed again and entry. Then we have category three. Category three are those passengers that need to have a background check done on them. So that one carries even a, a processing fee. You pay the $10 in addition to the $50 fee for the visa. So and then it is processed at our headquarters because there are some background checks that need to be done. The way that we, we, we process the passenger when he arrives is that like for our Kenyan client, they will just arrive with a passport, uh, present themselves personally because it is physical immigration, present themselves before the immigration officer and the immigration officer will verify some of the things that we discussed in departures. I hope you remember them, whether the document is genuine, whether the passenger who is standing in front of you is the same passenger who is on the, on the passport because of the cases of imposter detection. Then and the immigration officer is trying to establish, is this document fraud? So he is also analyzing the security features that we had talked about. As the immigration officer is doing all this, he is running the passenger through our system. It is called the PISES, Personal Information Secure Comparison and Evaluation System, whereby it gives us two advantages. One, we are able to enter that travel event, which forms part of your history in the travel. Secondly, we are able to run you through the system to see whether you are a person of interest. And if you are a person of interest, the system will direct us on the action to take. So for the category two passengers, when they arrive, I said they will have their passport together with their visa. Then they will present themselves before the immigration uh, officer. What is different there, the immigration officer will have to verify, in addition to the things that I had said about the passport, will have to verify the visa. They have their phones, which they can check whether the visa is ours. We have also supplied them with tablets, which they are connected to the internet, and they can verify the visa. Once the visa is verified to be true, same process like the Kenyan, put them through the system, and then in the passport endorse the authority to enter with the Kenya immigration entry stamp and put the codes of the, of the visa. And now for the category three that I told you that we need to run some background checks from those countries that obviously are facing some political quagmire. We have to send them to the, our duty office over there where the visa is verified to see whether it has gone through all the steps. I said it has been approved from our headquarters. And then once the secondary officer, our senior officer, the officer in charge, has verified that the visa has gone through all the process, he gives instruction to our primary officer again to come and, and, and put him through our system, the PICES system, and do the same for endorsement into the passport, and they are allowed entry into our country. Okay. Yes. You, you've sp spoken about category two people who are able to get visa yes. before they arrive. Yes. Can you explain how they can be able to access the uh, application of the visa? Okay, since the beginning of this year, last year we used to do visa on arrival, where passengers used to arrive on those tables over there, then they do the filling of the forms. That used to take a lot of time in processing the passenger. And there were very long queues in the passenger control, in the passport control. So from the, from the beginning of this year, we started the online, 100% online visa uh, processing, whereby you go to our website, which is www.evisa.go.ke. That one is very important because some passengers are going to the wrong site and they get charged a higher amount than the $50 that we are talking about. So it is www.evisa.go.ke. It prompts you, it is a very simple process. It prompts you to put your name, to attach your photo, to attach the travel document, to, tra to attach the tra travel itinerary and, and uh, the hotel reservation or your address. And then once you are able to pay online, because it prompts you to pay online, once you pay then it comes to our side and we are able to see it from the back end. From the back end we approve immediately. The category 2 visa does not take long. Immediately you apply and it is seen from our end. There are visas who are stationed waiting for those applications to come to our end. Then we approve immediately. The passenger uh, gets a copy of the visa in his or her email, prints it and comes with it for, for entry purposes. Currently, we have to say that once you get the visa, uh, the endorsement, the authority to enter Kenya for our foreigners is one month. 
We are giving one month holiday, one month business, one month medical to control the duration of stay. But if the visitor comes and falls in love with our beautiful country and wants to take longer, they are able to apply on the online at our EFNS or our e-citizen platform and apply online for the visa extension, which they will get a confirmation again in their email and print it. They can either, they will be asked to go to our headquarters to get it endorsed or they can carry it with the passport and it is good enough. That's great. Mm -hmm. Now that we are talking about visas, yes. when Kenyans go out there, are there countries that don't require visas from Kenyan citizens? Absolutely. There are very many countries that our passport will land and will not require visa to enter and uh, you just present the document and you get a stamp. First of all, our immediate neighbors, all the East African countries, Burundi, Tanzania, Uganda, uh, Rwanda, uh, Zambia, so such countries, most of the East African countries and, the most of, and, and Africa at large, you will enter without any requirement for a visa. You only need to present yourself to the immigration officer in that country plus the passport and you just get a, a stamp for entry. Let's come back to the passport control. Yes, please. If a passenger, a foreigner was to arrive, and you realize for one reason or another that person cannot be admitted into the country, what do you do with that passenger? Oh, those ones we refer to them as inadmissible passengers. When they arrive to our controls, we, as I told you on departure, the, our officers are well trained to flag out some of these suspicious documents, or we have a list of people that should not be allowed entry. We call them prohibited immigrants. They are found in, the, in there is a schedule in the Immigration Act of 2011. Such, an, such a passenger is immediately referred to our office and uh, for, further, for further processing by the secondary officer because you realize we want to take as much literal time with the primary officer as possible because the queue is long and we need uh, the secondary officer to do the secondary checks. So immediately they establish that indeed this is an, a person who is inadmissible. We will notify the airline in writing. We will write them in admissible form and we will request the airline to immediately remove that passenger back to their point of origin. Yes. That's good. Mm -hmm. Now, how many officers do you have on a working day? How on many counters are normally working when an aircraft arrives? All the counters are manned. All the counters, as you can see, they are manned on a, on a, on a daily basis. Whether they are flights or they are no flights, all the counters are usually manned. And if need be, there is a, a passenger flight that has come that has more passengers. And you, as you see, we have very many terminals. We will ask for backup from other terminals to make sure that we clear our passengers as fast as we can. Another very interesting question. Yes, Apart from the normal passport, which other document can a passenger present as a travel document? Oh, you find like uh, in the East African community, we have an agreement with Rwanda and Uganda that we use our IDs. So a Kenyan can arrive, can, can use the ID to go to Uganda or to Rwanda. Same case, a, a, a Rwandese and a Ugandan can use their ID to come to our country. That will be accompanied by another document that we call the Intercept Pass that is issued by the country that has issued that ID. Again, then again, you have temporary permits. Those are, perm those are travel documents that can be used for, for, for East African travel. That Kenyans, we do issue the temporary permit, so does the same case uh, Tanzania and other East African countries, and we recognize them. The temporary permit, our temporary permit, for instance, can travel to South Sudan. South Sudanese can come with their temporary permit, and we're able to recognize that as a as a travel document, but they have restrictions as to which countries they can go to. For instance, you cannot use the temporary permit to travel to Europe. It is not allowed. It is only an agreement between the East African member states. Yes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You've given us a lot of information. Now, with your experience at the airport and as an immigration officer, what parting shot would you give to the members of the public who are listening to you in terms of traveling into and out of the country? Okay, thank you very much. What I would like to tell uh, members of the public is that uh, most of our operations have been simplified <coughs> in terms of application for the travel documents, in terms of application for the resident permits, in terms of uh, being processed for entry and exit. So if you're looking for a country whereby you will have seamless immigration processes at arrival and departure, this is the place to be. We encourage our visitors, if you're looking for the best tourist destination, where you will come and just be served instantly and you'll be uh, on, the, on the way to the tourist sites, this is the place to be. So we encourage our investors also, which you can get the resident permits, they are online nowadays. The processes have been simplified. We are asking, if you are looking for the best immigration, uh, for the best East African country to be, this is our place. Because our processes have been simplified and we look forward to serving you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Edwin. You've been very helpful. Thank Asante sana. Thank you. To our viewers, we ask you to continue watching. Because the bags are still coming. I've got two more bags to, to give. And the question for today, can you name three countries 
where you don't require a visa as a Kenyan when you visit? Can you name three countries where you don't require a visa as a Kenyan when you visit? Please keep watching and uh, engage us on the social media handles as we get forward. We are moving on to the customs department where we'll see how customs processes the arriving passengers. Work with me. Hello, Mr. Kreer. Hello, hello. Hi. We, hi. We are back to you again. Karibu. We finished the journey of the departure passengers. We are back on the arriving side. Now, as a customs officer, what does a passenger expect to go through customs on arrival? What's your core function when the passenger arrives? Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, welcome to Customs uh, International Arrivals. Okay, this is where customs we are. The whole baggage claim area is a customs control area. So when a passenger comes through, they will go to the carousels, pick their checked-in bags, then they will come to customs. At that point, after claiming their bags, the passengers will have two options. In any international arrival, you will have two channels. We have the red channel, where you have goods to declare, and then we have the green channel, where you have nothing to declare. So when a passenger claims their bag, they make a self-declaration on which channel to use. We have various categories of passengers. We have category A, those are the bona fide passengers who are changing their residence and taking new residence in, in the country. We have the military personnel, we have the diplomats, we have uh, the returning students, they fall under category A. We categorize passengers because of the various concession and entitlement that they enjoy. Then we have category B of passengers. Those are the tourists and the visitors who are visiting the country for not more than uh, three months. They have the various uh, concession to an entitlement. Then we have category C. Those are holders of the Kenyan passport or residence. So when they come through, we expect them to make this declaration. Yes. What's the major difference between a Kenyan coming back and a foreigner coming in? Yeah. Are they any different in terms of what they are supposed to bring in? Yes, different categories of passengers have different entitlement and uh, uh, con uh, concession. So we, we determine that by looking at your, pa your travel documents. So whenever we see the category you are coming into the country, if you are visiting, you are coming in as a visitor for a sh short visit, you will take you to category A or category B. Uh, B. If you are a resident who has left Kenya for more than 24 hours, we are supposed to take you to category C. But what we we'll say is, any passenger who has anything to declare, got to use the red channel. Yes, if you have anything to declare, which is way above your entitlement and your concession, you are supposed to make that declaration to customs. Now, this screening machine, Yes. once I, once I put my baggage through it, Yes. what would give you a red alert? What would make you now say, I need to suck this bag? Thank you very much. We introduced this screening machine purposely for the carry-on bags, the handheld bags, because we realize high-value items are found in those particular bags. And allow me to inform the public that all bags that come through customs have been screened. The checked-in bags have been screened way behind by Kenya Post Authority Security, jointly with customs. And at that point, we are able even to mark a bag that will require secondary uh, screening. So when you come through here, we have the image analyst, we have a trained officer who are image analysts. They are able to analyze uh, the images from the bags and they are able to say this bag requires a secondary uh, inspection. At that point, we'll take that particular bag to the verification benches, now for secondary inspection. And I'll say before we open any bag for secondary in inspection, we've got to make sure that the bag has been sanitized the officer is well uh, dressed with all the, the PPEs, with the gloves, and then at that point we'll open that bag now for the secondary inspection. In addition to the things we identify, yes. what are the items that would now trigger you to involve other agencies, maybe for further screening? Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, where we have prohibited items coming into the country, for example, narcotics. When we have a case of narcotics, we usually call in anti-narcotics units who are the competent authority to, to now to lead in that process of multi-agency of, uh, multi verification. Or somebody is bringing in a firearm, a firearm is a, is a restricted item, you need a permit. We usually call in the police to come and 
confirm and to check on the documentation for them to, uh, to ascertain that those are genuine documentation for the importation of that particular restricted item. And probably allow me to say this, our main function as customs at this particular point is border control functions, enforcement of prohibitions, enforcement of restrictions, uh, passenger facilitation is key for us, and protection of the society. Later I'll be showing you a number of items that we've been able to intercept that could have been harmful to the society. And then uh, revenue collection for items that are way above the requisite or the allowed entitlement or concession. And probably what I would say is whenever we are dealing with any prohibited item that requires another multi-agency or that requires uh, further investigation or even prosecution, we call in the competent authority to come and lead in that particular uh, verification and investigation and all the way prosecution where customs will play a part as a witness to that particular case. Uh, apart from anti-narcotics and baby police, yes. are there any other agencies you interact with in the course of your duty? Uh, critical for us is uh, we work with the Kenya Bureau of Standards. When somebody is bringing in uh, items and we want to check on their standard, we call in uh, Kenya Bureau of Standards. We work with anti-counterfeit, uh, close in hand. Uh, we work with the uh, Pharmacy and poisons, there's a lot of medicaments that come through and uh, those ones are restricted items, so we call them. We want with the Kenya Plant Ins uh, Health Inspectorate, KEFIS, on uh, all plant materials that are coming into the country. So we have a whole multi-agency approach under the Border Management Committee that we're working under one umbrella and whenever we have an item that we know it will be handled well by another agency, we call them in as the, as the most competent agency to handle that particular case. Yes. So in, in essence you are saying customs is a link to many other agencies. So you facilitate many other agencies in screening everything that is coming into Kenya. We enforce the customs law and may, uh, uh, other various laws. Yes, that's what uh, we are able to do. Because for example, for you to bring in a drone, you must get authority from Kenya Civil Aviation Authority. Customs will not allow you to bring in a drone if you don't have a permit from Civil Aviation Authority. If you are bringing in a firearm, we will enforce the Firearm Act. Yes. If you are bringing in medicaments, we will enforce uh, the Pharmacy and Poisons Act, which calls for you to have permits before you bring in, uh, before you bring in the medicaments. We do even uh, enforce other international laws, like the Basel, the Basel Convention on hazardous materials and substance. That one we won't allow you to bring in them. Yeah, we enforce the Montreal uh, laws, we enforce the CITES laws, we do enforce, we won't allow you to bring in uh, anything that contravenes uh, the CITES requirement uh, on illegal wildlife trade, we won't allow you, so we enforce that law too. So, and we enforce even the, the, uh, the narcotics controls and psychotropic substance control convention, we do enforce it at this point as customs. From your experience, yes. what is the most interesting experience you've ever had? as a customs officer with the experience at JKIA. One or two examples that make your work quite interesting. Yeah, uh, it is uh, intercepting somebody who was, uh, who's bringing in a, a narcotics mule, somebody who has, who has swallowed in uh, uh, cocaine and coming through the, uh, through the terminal and uh, working with the multi-agency, with our international partners who gave us an advanced information, we were able to intercept that person who was bringing in narcotics into the who were trying to bring in narcotics into the country. Swallowed in? Oh yes, swallowed, ingested. Yes. Uh, we had a good uh, intelligence and our profile was perfect. And I'll tell you that was a perfect day for us because we were able to prevent uh, smuggling of narcotics into the country. Yeah, another interesting thing is uh, being able to intercept uh, uh, the concealed uh, narcotics in bags too. And then we even have uh, somebody checking in a firearm. Intercepting a firearm in a checked in bag and a bulletproof jacket, those has been uh, one of the best experiences we have we faced at this particular point. Yes. And with your experience, what, what would you like to tell the, the public as a parting shot on your experience at the airport for a traveling passenger? Oh, what I'll tell the public is uh, critical for us when you're coming to customs, first to, for us to be able to clear you very fast. Uh, we have the passenger declaration form which we expect all passengers arriving into Kenya to fill it up. Give us accurate information, checking on what is restricted and what is prohibited. 
When we do that, we are able to clear you fast and the uh, use of the CT scanners has really helped us to avoid opening uh, passengers' bags. Nowadays, we really open the bags that really require secondary inspection, but we have moved really away from opening bags to non-intrusive. And uh, what I would really advise the public is, whenever you are traveling, always go to the KRA website, www.kra.go.ke, and pick out uh, the information on the passenger handbook, and then we have the frequently asked questions on the traveling passenger, and then of importance is the passenger declaration form. I would really advise all passengers, even Kenyans, our brothers and sisters, kindly fill up this particular form. It makes our work easier and we're able to facilitate our passenger and give them the best experience while we are protecting our borders against those people who would want to abuse our borders and bring in firearms and declared, bring in bulletproof jackets, bring in obscene articles. I'll be showing you some later, expired medicaments and even narcotics. We would want to really prevent those while facilitate the general public who are law abiding. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Kirel. Maybe you'd just like to take us to show us just a few of the things that then be able to intercept at this airport to show how far they are in protecting our country. So here we have just a few examples of the items that we've been able to intercept. Uh, these are prohibited uh, items. Used tires for light vehicles and passenger vehicles that are prohibited. Then we have uh, a whole box of uh, medicaments. Yeah, these were, have been already, they have already been condemned by Pharmacy and Poisons Board. They were expired by the time they were being brought into the country. Uh, same, this is the same. So all these have been uh, condemned and uh, we are just, uh, they are subject for destruction. Then we have the shisha apparatus and the flavors. These are prohibited, they are not allowed in the country. We have the light, the lightening uh, lotion. These they contain mercury. They, they are prohibited into the country, so we don't allow this because uh, they contain mercury in it. Uh, then we have toy guns. It looks like a real gun. These are toy guns. Then we have empty magazines. Somebody bringing in. All these are restricted. Then we have an actual firearm. This is an actual firearm that had been checked in and uh, the, passenger, the passenger does not have the, the permit but uh, they did have a permit uh, or a license to own a firearm or import a firearm into Kenya. So this one is, uh, is an actual firearm and it is restricted. So we won't allow it into the country until all the permits have been obtained. Uh, then we have drones. We have a number of drones that have really been brought in. Drones are restricted and uh, you require authorization from a Kenya Civil Aviation Authority uh, for you to bring in a drone or even to fly it. So these are some of the items. Uh, of interest, okay, we have the handcuffs, which have really been uh, uh, brought in by a passenger. Then we have a bulletproof jacket, quite heavy. This is a bulletproof jacket that was uh, being brought in by a passenger. This is restricted. So this one we found it in the checked in bags and uh, we intercepted it. You find it's quite heavy. These are heavy duty uh, uh, bulletproof jackets. So these are some of the items that we've been able to intercept, uh, which are restricted and prohibited. And uh, what I would want to say is uh, the scanners have really been helpful to us for us to be able not to protect the, our borders. It has really assisted us uh, in facilitating passengers. Nowadays, we experience faster, faster passenger uh, clearance because of the scanners. Uh, what I would really encourage the members of public is uh, please go through uh, the information that is in the passenger declaration form for you to be able to know what you require to declare to customs, uh, what is prohibited so that you avoid bringing it into the country, and what is restricted. For all the restricted items, kindly ensure that you get all the authorization and all the permits from the relevant authorities and agencies before you bring them into the country. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kirel. I believe the members of public have really learned a lot from Mr. Kirel. Next time you want to travel, you know what to expect, you know what to experience. We've taken you through the airport. We've arrived from the arrival gate. We've come through immigration. We've come through baggage hall. We've come through customs.
Now you are confident when you want to travel to and from Kenya and what the expectations, expectations you'll have at the airport. JKI is a great airport for our foreign travelers and our local travelers. For now, I would like you to join me to go and see the rest of the team that has made this a reality. Come with me. We wish to thank our viewers for being with us through the whole process. Public health, immigration, customs, the airport operator. Our great viewers, please join us on our next release on Ask Your Aviator series. Keep engaging us on our social media handles and we need to thank all of our facilitators for the day. Thank you very much. Thank you. And hoping to see you next Thank time. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's been great having you. Thank you very much.